Morning. Thank you, Peter, for leading us and the rest of the team this morning in worship. If you're thinking, I, I thought I just got shot there. <laughs> if you're thinking, what's he doing up there again? Yep, you've got me two weeks in a row. So either enjoy or put up with it because it is not going to change. Okay. We're carrying on our series uh, this morning about things Jesus didn't say. Jesus didn't say, live your truth or be true to yourself. Jesus didn't say that. And we're just going to look into that and see what Jesus did actually say. I'm going to read a few verses from John 18. And this is where um, Pilate is uh, speaking to Jesus and it says this, You are a king then, Pilate says. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into this world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? retorted Pilate. With this, he went out again to the Jews gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him. So Pilate asks a really good question. What is truth? It's a, it's a great question, and it seems like a simple question that we should be able to easily understand the difference between what is true and what isn't true. But it seems that life is very complicated. And um, apparently there are, there are like four versions of what is true. So the, the first one of those is called objective truth. And that is something that you can prove um, scientifically or physically. So a car crashing at 100 mile an hour will cause more damage than a car crashing at 70 mile an hour. So you can test that, you can, you can do a, a study, you can do some trial tests, and you can prove that that is true. Then there is something called normative truth. And that is when we all agree that something is true. So this example, carrying on this car crash example, um, that example would be that we all understand that the speed limit on a motorway in the UK is 70 mile an hour. We all understand that to be, to be true. Then there's something called subjective truth, which is how an individual sees or feels or experiences something. So subjective truth is a, is a bit like this. I think I'm a better driver than the average person, therefore it's okay for me to drive at 100 mile an hour. That's subjective truth. The person thinks that's true. And then there's something called complex truth or, or the whole truth, which is trying to bring all those things together to understand what is truth? What is the truth? What is true? So if we use that same example again, what is the truth is that however you feel about it personally, it's illegal and dangerous to drive at 100 mile an hour on the motorway. That's the whole, that's the whole truth. And in court, um, they are trying to seek the whole truth. Because you can say things that are true, but it isn't the whole truth. It's, it's only a partial truth. And problems come when we, we just rely on subjective truth, what, how we feel, what we think, what we experience. And we ignore the facts, and we ignore what generally people believe about something. And that's where I think some of the problems come with this idea about living your own truth or being true to yourself. It depends what your truth is and whether it's actually true or not. Because we know that feelings which drive subjective truth, feelings aren't always that reliable. And sometimes 
and often they're not a good basis for making decisions. We know that often if we we're not in a very good place, the decisions we make aren't very good. And this, this idea about subjective truth, this idea about relative truth, that what is relative to me ignores all these other things, discounts all these other things. So is it really true? Or is it just a, a little, a grain of truth, but not the, not the whole truth? And we know that feelings change, and we know that sometimes when we do the right thing, when we're true to what the right thing is, even if we don't want to do it, even if our feelings, we don't want to do it, eventually our feelings catch up with the truth and what is right and doing the right thing. Because we can easily justify doing the wrong thing. We can easily subjectively say this is okay because this is how I feel. But it isn't necessarily true or the truth. And a lot of the times what is driving us when we, when we base our truth on our feelings, it's all about us. It's all about what we think is good for us. Often what we think is good for us in the short term, even if it isn't good for us in the long term. And we can become very self-focused. We can become very internal. And I just want us to look today about how do we look at truth from a biblical perspective. And I want to give you five foundational truths that come from the Bible. So there's quite a lot of scripture today, but it is all good stuff because it's from the Bible. It's better than the stuff I say because it's from the Bible. So the first thing, first thing is that the truth is that God loves man and woman. God is good, he is with us, and he is for us. In 1 Timothy 2, it says this, I urge you, first of all, that petitions, prayers, and intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and those in authority, that we may live peacefully and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Saviour, who wants all people to be saved, God is for us, and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. Man was created to relate to God and to know God and to be known by him. The whole of the Bible is telling that story. That is the story of the Bible, that there is a God who loves us and care for our, cares for us and wants to be with us. And if we know and believe in that God, that will give us a clear direction, an understanding of what is truth and how to live a life that is true and authentic. So that's the first thing, the, the truth that God's lo God loves us. The second truth we get out of the Bible is this truth about salvation. The Bible offers us a promise of salvation if we believe in Jesus. In John 14, it says this, Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth and the life. It's as clear as that. Jesus said, he didn't say, believe your own truth. He didn't say, be true to yourself. He said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. In John 3, 16 and 17, it says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. God sent his Son so that whoever believes in him, any of us who believes in him, in, in his truth will be saved the third fundamental truth we see in the bible is that we are imperfect people we are not god we make mistakes we do things wrong 
Isaiah 53 says this, we, are, we all like sheep have gone astray. Each one of us has turned to our own way and the Lord has laid on him, Jesus, the iniquity of us all. In Isaiah 64, this is what it says in the message version, we've sinned and kept at it for so long. Is there any hope for us? Can we be saved? We are all sin infected, sin contaminated. Our best efforts are grease stained rags. We dry up like autumn leaves, sin dried and we're blown off by the wind. Psalm 53 says, God looks down from heaven on the children of man to see if there is any who understand who seek after God. They have all fallen away. Together they have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. And Jeremiah 17 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? This is the truth. And we know this is the truth. We know that we're capable of doing good things. We're capable of doing kind, loving things but we're also capable of doing bad things. And it's all of us. We're, we're all in the same boat. We need a saviour. We cannot do this on our own. We need someone who's greater than us. And that we need to know that truth, that we are not enough, that we need a saviour. The fourth truth I want to mention to you is the truth that comes from reading and understanding and living by the Bible. Jesus said in John 17, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, talking to the Father, but you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. The word of God is true. The written word of God is true. The spoken word of God revealed through the Bible is true. In 2 Timothy 3 we read this, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking and correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped to do every good work. So that we who believe in God are equipped to live a life where we seek the truth, we walk in the truth, we honour the truth. Proverbs 3 says this, and I was, this is my testimony, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Don't believe in your own publicity. Don't believe in your own truth. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Honour the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats be bursting with wine. The Bible is where we find truth and we find a model for life. We need to submerge ourselves in in the Bible, in biblical truth. It, it is our roadmap, it's our guide to go forward. The last truth I just want to mention to you is the truth about what happens when we die. In one, in Titus 1 verses 1 and 2 it says, Paul a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ to further the faith of God's elect and their knowledge of the truth that leads to godliness in the hope of eternal life which God who does not lie promised from the beginning of time this is a really important verse it tells us two really important things the first is that there is eternal life that there is a hope for us who believe in eternal life and that hope is not like wishful thinking hope that hope is the certainty of something to come the belief in something to come, the understanding that the God who speaks truth says it, said it, so it's going to happen, the promise of eternal life. It also says, God who does not lie. Other trans translations uh, say God who cannot lie. 
it's impossible for God to lie. This was one of my favorite expressions of my granddad. He used to go, God, do you know God cannot lie? His, his, his character, who he is, is truth. It's impossible for him to lie because he, he is truth. He speaks truth. He is truth. God is truth. It's his very nature. So those five fundamental things I think are really helpful for us in how we live life and what we believe is true. Donald Trump was famous for always claiming that bad things said about him were fake news. It's like his, one of his favourite expressions, wasn't it? Like, it's fake news, fake news, fake news. And we know that people and the media make things up that aren't true, that are fake. Truth is so important for us. The truth always prevails. The truth always come, comes out. I remember speaking to um, a guy quite a few years ago and somebody was consistently lying about him, actually lying in court about him and saying all sorts of things that weren't true. And it was really hard time for this, this guy to go through. But he held on to the fact that the truth always prevails. The truth always comes to pass. And eventually, lies are always shown to be exactly what they are, lies. The truth is so important. Lies are exposed. The truth is so important. In John 8, it says this, to the Jews who had believed him, Jesus says, if you hold to my teaching, if you are really my disciples, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. We are the same now today. We, Jesus is saying to us, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The truth is that there is freedom and hope and a future found in Jesus. That is the truth. If we seek him, we'll find him. If we believe him and trust him, we will live the life that he's called us to live. And we will walk in truth. We will be people of truth. And the truth is a beautiful thing. Lies are actually really ugly. And the truth is a beautiful thing. Let us be people who speak the truth, who are the truth, who walk in the truth. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that you are truth. It is your character, it's who you are. Just like you are love, you are truth. What you say is true, what you promise, you do. Lord, help us, Lord, to be submerged in your truth. Help us to be embedded in your truth, Lord. Help us to live by the words you've given us in the Bible to help us live a life that is true, that has purpose and hope and future. Help us by your Holy Spirit, Lord, to recognise truth and to pursue it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen.